This is Eat, Sleep, Invest, the marketing podcast for real estate investors to get more deals. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Eat, Sleep, and Invest. I'm your host, Brian Driscoll, and I'm here with Phil Laboon. What's going on, Phil? Uh, not much, Brian. How about yourself, buddy? You know? Hey, so guys, anyone listening, I've known Phil for, I don't know, what do you, what do you think? Like 20 years? More than 20 years, man. We knew it's been a long time. Teens, mid-teens. Yeah, Phil's the guy that introduced me to the digital world way back in the day. Spamming, so, uh, spamming guest books and uh, Craigslist and yeah, all the black hat stuff, man. Yeah, good, spam, yeah, yeah, remember G doing the uh, spam and Craigslist? Oh, yeah, man. Automated it's, system. Uh, yeah, you did. It's, hey, it worked. It's what you it had to did. do back then. Google didn't care. It did. So yeah, now you have to adapt and everything. But hey, Phil, give a little background because you have real estate experience. You got uh, digital marketing experience. You have a lot of experience with funnels and also like crypto, stuff like that. And then just in business in general and affiliate stuff. So like give like a high level background. Man, so yeah, man, we worked together in real estate years ago when I started the brokerage pre-construction real estate um, in the kind of like mid 2000s where I was basically doing digital marketing on these pre-construction investment properties. So you would have um, these developments that they would pre-sell down in Florida back when the, that market was just insane. And then, so we would market, as you remember, we would basically press releases and all this marketing. So you couldn't even find the developer. People would come to us and we'd do the sale. Sadly, most of those developments never got built. So we never got paid. But um, that got me into doing short-term rental properties. I've done uh, rental properties, Costa Rica, Seven Springs, like ski resorts. I have, uh, you know, uh, I guess you got you know, a lot of short-term vacation rental stuff. But then I, I have a few houses that I got that I rent out. So still in the real estate, but most of my stuff is in the lead gen space. So building funnels and automations for people to generate leads in a way that helps them um, streamline the process. So they don't need these big teams or big companies. They can kind of blueprint it all out and then just know that here's where I need to get the lead to get to. Here's my starting point and not even thinking about it, but customizing the buyer's journey to, to get the prospect or lead to buy, convert, set an appointment, whatever. But that's that's where I, my wheelhouse is. So what kind of, like what kind of funnels and on that side too? Because you figure... Say you're selling like a $2 item. A lot of times you don't even really need a funnel. But if you're selling like a course or you need to build credibility, things like that, what types of things are you doing from taking a cold audience, like someone that doesn't know who you are, and then converting them into someone that knows, likes, and trusts you and is willing to give you and partner up with you, things like that? Like, how's that work? One, one thing I want to tell you is you always need a funnel. I'm sorry. A, a funnel is, think of a funnel, and a lot of people I think get confused about this, is it's just setting up, a pre-planning a process of step one, step two, step three, success. So even if you're selling a $2 product, you should you don't want to just throw ad spend out there or send everybody to a website. You should say, here's the KPIs that I'm going to look at, the key performing indicators, because if you're spending money and you have a business, then you want to be able to map out where things are going wrong. And that's all a funnel really is, is setting up a stage system. So yes, it doesn't matter as much for a $2 widget, probably not. But um, if, if you could sell a $2 widget, then I would, I would build a funnel to never stop selling. I would constantly try to add something, something, something that sell for higher prices, more money, because you never know where this, where this person's willing to stop spending. Yeah. But, and you know what? That's a good thing you bring up there too, because you actually have like two, two parts of a funnel too, right? Like you got the marketing side, say on Facebook, building funnels on what you show people. And then you have the funnel once they engage with and how you upsell them. So explain that a little bit to people too, because there's the front facing, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So the front facing is like the top of the funnel. How are you, you generating interest and how are you getting them uh, to not really give your information first? You're kind of getting in front of them and trying to pull, pull the interest, find people that are somewhat interested, then get them into your nurturing funnel, get their text, get their phone number, get their email and lead with value. So the, the number one mistake that I think everybody makes is they keep, they just go for the sale or go for the set appointment. Hey, I'll give you a free consultation for this or um, buy this. Let's talk about this. That's You're asking for a very big commitment nowadays. There's so much noise out there and people are approached so many times. You, how you want to approach people is giving something away for cheap or free that provides a massive amount of value. If I run an ad and I'm going to give all this information and insight for free, checklist, checklist blueprints, um, a masterclass video course, and I'm giving that away for free to, we'll say $47 and it provides a ton of value. What are the chances that you're going to buy a $2,000, $3,000 product off me if you're already impressed with the $47 product? 
Yeah, that's a good point too. Cause yeah, a lot of people I know whenever they're saying, Hey, I'm, I'm scared to give away all the secrets. I'm scared to put stuff out there, all that kind of stuff. And, and it's right. Like give over, deliver that value. Cause yeah, people are like, yeah, I gave him $47 and he gave me this. What's he going to give me for two grand? And, and exactly. And here's the thing you need to think about that person who takes your $47 course and thinks they learned everything and they're going to run with it. That's not someone you want to probably sell anyways. Like that's probably not someone you, you, that's not your ideal client. That's not someone who is probably ever going to spend 2000, 3000, $5,000 on whatever you're trying to sell. And I know it's kind of worth talking about high ticket coaching stuff now, but, but those people who will take the little bit of value you give and run, um, you're probably a doing something wrong. You, you may have given them the whole entire A to B, which that is a little bit of a nuance. You never want to give them everything possible. You always have to keep that secret sauce. And that's why where upsells come in. And that's why ClickFunnels has been so successful over the years where I'm not a big fan of ClickFunnels as a software, but I think it's a great community. But you you want to give them something where you get them interested, you provide value, but wait, there's more. And you have that extra product or add-on that makes this much more effective, but this you're paying a premium for. So how do people even come up with the idea? Like, how do they come up with, hey, this is what I'm going to do at 47, but I'm going to give them this after. Like, what is there a process or anything? Uh, so I'll show you my software. If you don't mind, I'll share my screen with you. I'll show yeah, you sure. one of our software. So, so we produce a lot of our software. We merge a lot of existing APIs. So we're not developers. We kind of find the best stuff out there and we, we pull it all together and use it in different ways. This is one of our funnel builders. So we like to map everything out. And, and you honestly have no idea what's going to work and what's not. I mean, I, I've had instances where I take the hero product that we're giving away for next to nothing. And then we have the upsell and we switch the price points and the products. And now it's successful. Wasn't successful the other way, but it, it, it's funny how that works. So you want to basically come up with a general value ladder. What can you sell by stepping up? And then what are those basic price points? Then you want to run data in and check it out. So in this instance, what we're saying is here's some different ways that we would prospect LinkedIn marketing, cold email outreach, organic SEO, just different ways. We kind of give some notes there, but then this is where the real nuts and the bolts get into it, where now you have your hero offer where that's where you're giving away a lot of value for, for very cheap or free. And they're signing up. And then you say, well, I'm also going to put a pop-up on there with a webinar, for example, or I'm going to teach you something because you're not sold yet then we try to push you into the, that low price point, seven bucks usually to 47 bucks. And then we hit you with the upsells, downsells, cross-sells. And we've done these upsells, downsells where literally there's been, I'd say the most I've ever done is probably six where we keep saying, but what about this? What about this? What about this? And you see what people are responding to, what they like, what they don't like. And you start moving it around, taking things out. And that's how you optimize your funnel. Yeah, cool. Now, and, and anybody, anybody listening to this on audio too, we're, it's going to be on YouTube. So you can see the, because uh, Phil's laying out the actual flow of the funnel here. And then you're talking upsells. It's like, hey, they, you took this. How about this? And we upsell them. And a downsell is, hey, we, we sold you. And then we asked you if you wanted something else. And you said no. So we're going to say, oh, okay, maybe we can give you this, right? Correct. And, and the idea really is to cut through the noise and run ads so you can get the cheapest price possible on running your ad spend. So you can, you can get people in and start getting that traffic and getting that data in. And I will tell you, for example, there's things called giveaway funnels where we've run ads where we say, Hey, we're going to give you something away. So something that kind of uh, relates to your industry. So um, for example, for solar. So there's this company we're dealing with now, they're going to give away this thousand dollar home solar generator for your house. So now they know you're interested in the environment. They know you're interested in someone in the solar. It plugs into the, the, into your house. So they ask if you're a homeowner, so they're going to give this away. They're going to run ads for a raffle. People are going to, because the value they're giving is they're getting you into this raffle. So now people are going to be willing to give you more information. They're going to tell you if they're going to ho a homeowner, they're going to tell you their state, they're going to tell you their zip code. You're going to have to say, give me the correct phone number. So I know to tell you if you win or not. So you're, you're harnessing all this info, but as you're doing this, you're not letting them go. They're filling out the raffle and then you, you can make them call in to verify their information where then you can have a call center, try to hard sell them. You can have automated upsells, downsells where you say, but wait, we'll sell you this, this, um, we'll give you a free, no cost solar consultation. If we can offer, if we can get you solar for no money down, would you be willing to do it? Type your address in. And now we turn the raffle lead into a solar lead, which appointments go for a couple hundred bucks an appointment. And we can automate that the whole process down the line. And now we know 
exactly where A to B is, and we can see where what step are things not going the way that we were hoping. Yeah, and this is important, like, <clears throat> and it works in many different industries. So say even because a lot of our people listen are real estate investors, <clears throat> you can do things like you generate that lead, you give them a free download. Hey, top 10 things uh, you need to do to sell your house. Or here's my book. Like books build a lot of credibility in, in like this space. Uh, insurance, financial, things like that too. You give them a book for free plus shipping. Once they read that book, do you think they're likely to book an appointment with you and trust you versus the other guy down the street? What do you think, Phil? Like, what do you, what do you see on that side? We work with a lot of authors. So uh, a lot of, a lot of that, the, the, what I just showed you was developed based upon the free plus book shipping offer. So get this book for free, just pay three ninety five dollars shipping and handling. And then we always either had an appointment upsell or trying to do an upsell to get the ad spend back. So we're running ads on it. But I would say what's even, what's even better than a book is if you can do a, what we call premium content bundles. So you actually, instead of saying, here's a book, you're saying, I'm going to give you the calculator. I'm going to give you these con- plug and play contracts for your real estate deals that you can just go in. Uh, you're gonna, I'm going to give you this video masterclass. It's going to walk you through you know, how you should be looking at these house. I'm going to give you an Excel sheet where you can plug in the numbers and see if it's actually a good investment based upon whatever. You know? And so now you're giving this whole bundle and it looks up super impressive. And there's all this stuff. You're almost overwhelming them with value at this point. So it's very easy to turn that person into a lead because all that you have to say is, there's so much stuff I'm sending you for free and it looks super impressive from a, from a 30,000 foot overview. How would you like me to walk you through it? And then you're, what you're basically saying is let's get on a call so I can sell you and having me do this for you. That makes sense. <clears throat> so now what are, some of the, what are some of the mistakes and like basics that everyone's doing that they do, the, they do everything wrong? Man, I don't <laughs> even know where to start on that. Um, one, the biggest issue that people have is they don't automate anything. They use like an Insta page, they use lead pages and they just get the lead and they get it into their email. And then they, they try to, you know, get a hold of that person and they go, oh, I don't really need it right now. Um, so I'm just using this form real quick. And I know that probably sounds uh, familiar with you. Like, uh, you know, it's a little side thing, but it takes just as much time to, if you get in the mindset of building inside of a system that tracks a lead and tags them and puts in the CRM, it's just getting used to that process. You never know when you want to use those leads again. So you always want to have a system. It, it doesn't take any extra time. To, to build a system that tags the lead, how they came in, tag them with their zip code, their address, whatever, the, whatever information's useful for you and storing that. And then also having an automated system, maybe for a you know, week, two weeks, sometimes several months where you're just going to keep pinging the lead, especially if it's something like real estate where they may not need you right now, but they might need you a month from now. They might need you six months from now but you want to build credibility and stay top of mind until that happens. Yeah. And that's a really good point too. Cause even on our real estate stuff, someone fills out a form on our site. We shoot them a text to book an appointment. Like that's in it on say on Google pay-per-click. I talk about this a lot. Uh, if some in, our, in the real estate space, if you're on Google pay-per-click, they're filling out all three websites. Boom, boom, boom. Maybe at three in the morning. If you automate and shoot them that text message, you pull them away from what they're doing get them to book with you. But then also like Phil's saying too, most of these people aren't ready. I'd say 50%, they're looking, seeing, hey, how can we sell our house? Stuff like this. So instead of you having to remind, uh, keep tablet and keep calling people and reminding, you still want to follow up with them, but you can have text messages and emails go out automatically. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and you can customize it, which is a lot of people don't understand the tech stack side of things. And that's obviously I'm a big automation software guy and we have our own software. But when you ask questions like how much are you, what's your budget to buy a house or what are you looking to get for your house? What's your house worth? Again, I know you're doing wholesaling and then there's traditional real estate, but imagine asking these questions and then saving those answers as variables. Now imagine those variables are pushed, are, are included in your text messages and emails. So you can say, hey, name, I see you're trying to sell your house at address inputted and you're looking to get number inputted. Um, I think I might be able to get you close to that. Can we jump on a call real quick tomorrow just so I can verify some info? So imagine you, you ju- they just told you all this information. You text them and it brings it all up. Every single person will have a 100% custom message to them. And it looks like you are engaged. It looks like you're, you're interested in what they have to say. But I will guarantee you that is going to work. You're going to get a 5x appointment show up rate doing that versus just sending application received will reach out to you. 
Yeah, and you're right too, because then it's then it's personable, especially in this world. Everyone's spamming, everyone's like dropping a whole bunch of garbage. So this kind of cuts through the noise and it makes them feel like, oh yeah, this is a real person reaching out to me. The the two big things I tell everybody, people make mistakes. One, they send blanket texts at the same time to everybody. And you know, it doesn't make sense. You're kind of hitting the person when they're not expecting it. Whereas I like to do things at very specific times where they did do something or they didn't do something. Like let's say you give that bundle away for free and you send them a course. You can put a link on there to say, did they log into my course yet? Yes or no. If they did, thank them for logging in and see if they have questions and let's set up a time. If you have any questions before I'll walk you through it. So again, you're setting up an appointment. Now let's say they don't log in. Hey name, I saw you still haven't logged in. Let's set up a time for us to hop on a call. Um, and, and if it's scary or, you, you know, I'll personally walk you through it. So you're setting the same thing. That's the goal on both of those are the same to get them to schedule an appointment to talk with you. But because you're nurturing them at the exact time and you're doing it for the, for a reason that makes sense, it's, it converts at just an insanely higher rate, especially when you start pulling in the second part of it, which is that customization. Cause like in that message, you could say, I'd really like to help you sell address for price wanted. And I, and I think this course can help you do it. Let's jump on a call and we'll talk. And you just keep reiterating what their goals are to them. Yeah, that's pretty solid too. Um, same with, you can do like phone, phone drops and everything too, right? Oh man. So we, we convert at such a high rate. So keep in mind, we're not doing like very small lead gen campaigns. Our clients are looking for hundreds or th sometimes thousands of leads a day. And a lot of times they're not looking for leads. What they're looking for is actual the, call, the phone, the ring for their inbound call center so they can sell X, Y, and Z. So yes. Yeah, so one of our little tricks that we do is we try to engage right away by sending what's called a ringless voicemail drop. You call twice, you hang up on the first one and you make it sound like, I saw you just filled out the form. Uh, I saw you looking to sell your house. It's off market. It looks like something we could really be interested in. I just need to verify some information. Can you? I'm going to send you a text. Can you just schedule a link uh, on that text and we'll hop on a quick call? So now you send this ringless voicemail. They listen to it or read the transcript. Now you follow up with a text. And again, you put in that text message, you're going to customize with their address and the numbers, everything again. And then you're going to send that, that scheduling link. Now in that, you can see, did they schedule or did they, did they not schedule? So in 24 hours, if they didn't schedule yet, you can say, hey, John, I'm really interested. I think I might even have someone that would buy this cash right now, but I need to talk to you. Please schedule an appointment. And, or if they did schedule, you can just do a nurture, a simple nurture series reminding them of the call. But that kind of can illustrate how you can customize all of this to get your convert, to, to turn you know, um, the mass majority of your leads into inbound calls for, we'll say four to six cents a lead. Yeah, that, that's pretty huge too. Now, how do you come up with like scenarios? Like, how do you map something out like this? Because like a lot of, if they do this, then we do that. That seems pretty complicated, right? Like how, how, you, how you mapping that all out? That's uh, doing it for 20 years. <laughs> that's, yeah. you know, that's, um, you know, I've been digital marketing a long time. So you start to, you just notice patterns. You know, you, you start to, you know, in, in between different industries at the end of the day, selling is selling process is process. You don't in, you just feel comfortable. The, the hardest part that I notice that people have with this is like, I don't want to text people because I don't want to feel spammy. Well, nobody reports our stuff for spam. Nobody, because no one thinks it's a robot. It's so custom at such a, at the right time. We're not bulk, but people are so used to that we call limiting beliefs that, oh, if I send a text message, people are going to complain about spam. Well, only if you spam. So, so, um, so it comes down to just understanding and, and having that data in the back of your brain to know this will work. And this is, this isn't over the line and yeah, it's, it's literally just, you know, thinking it out and having the confidence to pull the trigger. Yeah, I guess that's true, too, because you're yeah, talking about spam. If you're thinking of, if someone reached out to you and you're sending them a message trying to give them what they wanted and give them value and answer what they were looking for, that's not really considered spam. If you're blanket messaging everyone with spam, it is. So there's a difference. You can text people and actually help them out and get them what they need. Exactly. And I'm going to show you a real estate example of the, I get spam every week on one of my rental properties. Um, hey, Philip, Danielle, I was trying to reach the homeowner 5631, blah, blah, blah. Do I have the right number? So I get these nonstop in every type of way. They're buying address lists um, of homeowners in, in certain price points. And that's a, that's a lower income home. Yeah. It's like 200, 
thousand dollar home, whatever. Uh, so they're they're you know trying to buy it. They're just going through these lists and buying these lists. Well, first, I that's a twenty five thousand dollar fine if I really wanted to be a jerk and I wanted to go after them. Um, there's lawyers who just live for this. There's whole services that I could contact. They take half, I take half, and they go after the company because now all text is, is based on your EIN. So all these realtors out there, and I will say realtors are probably the biggest, um, they're, they're the worst at it because they I, they don't realize what they're doing is illegal and has a massive fine for 25,000 per SMS use send without TCPA compliance, where the system that we're doing, we're adding TCPA compliance. So first, legally, you don't have to worry about anything. But second, they're expecting it. You're not just cold pitching list that you scraped online. This person filled out a form for value. You gave them value. And now you're just trying to get them to the next step. And if they don't like the next step, you you ask them why. You, you, you try to actually nurture and see Hey, did you like this? Did you not like this? Did you want to talk? Hey, I know you didn't open the last thing I sent you, but here's a here's something else, another piece of value that's even better on top of what I did before that I think you might enjoy. Who's gonna, you know, who's gonna get upset about that? Yeah, and you know what? That's that brings up a good point too. Like even with the fines, that's why it's so important to work with a specialist, just because most people don't even know like text messaging everything's changing right now. Like you can actually get in trouble for doing things. I, I actually just got a text this morning too, trying to buy one of my properties. Like, yeah. come on, guys. They just buy the list, their public list. And we get people approaching us all the time about it. And I tell them nowadays, you have to register your EIN with the SMS provider. And if like, um, what will end up happening is a lawyer will end up subpoenaing and get that information of everything you've done through Twilio or the service. And they're going to do like either a class action lawsuit against you or try to negotiate something. Um, but I mean, you hear about it all the time, people paying hundreds of thousands of dollars in fines to avoid millions and millions of dollars in fines. Yeah, it's nuts. Yeah. So, okay, so Phil, what's the ideal type of person that's a good fit for you? Because you you can do this for people. Like, they don't have to really think about it. You can help them set up these funnels, set everything up. You learn about their business and pretty much build it for them. Like, what's the type of people? Like, where do they need to be at in their career? And what type of people are you looking to work with? So we're not definitely not looking for people that don't have businesses or just kind of have ideas or thoughts. That's really not for us. We're, we're looking for people who have a model and they want to start streamlining it. They typically people who come to us, they have a business already set and we work with every type of business. I mean, we, we have uh, fortune 500 clients that we do automation and build funnels for. Uh, but the majority we have are kind of small, medium sized businesses where we can take a core. So we can take like a premium offer bundle, work with you on how to edit, how to change it, how to make it work, and then push it out. So um, I, I would say, yeah, small, small to medium businesses that are looking to automate and grow. But um, you know, on occasion, we get these larger people who come in, they've heard of us, we worked with one of their smaller competitors. And you know, those got pros and cons too. Uh, usually a lot more red tape and legal involved in those. Um, but you know, we're a small agency. We like to work with, with, uh, smaller businesses one-on-one, make sure they understand our system and our processes so it can be successful. Okay. So, so to confirm, you're looking more for seasoned businesses though. I guess not necessarily the size, but people with a product, not just starting out. Want to know, I got an idea. I want to test this out. You're looking for like the guys that have been doing it for a while that are looking to take their sales up to the next level. Yes. And people who actively want to work with us. When I say work with us, we, you know, I, I can sell you a race car. I can't make you a professional race car driver, right? I, I can I can guide you and I can lead you down, but there's no way that myself or my employees are going to understand your company and the nuances of every company. Even though we could have worked with 20 people in your industry, there's t- they all have different resources and different processes. So it's it's we need the client to be involved. We need uh, the person that, that we're talking to to actually want to be involved in the process and help with the value and the education and explain the clients what they think will or won't work. We love working with people that are, that give us feedback and we feel like we're growing together. Okay. Yeah. That, that's really good too. Cause yeah, a lot of guys just want to be like, Hey, I want to pay 20 grand or whatever and build something and I don't have to do anything with it. This is customized to your business. <clears throat> so to be customized, you got to be involved with it, but then you're going to get a really good output. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. There's no such thing as a magic, uh, a magic bullet to make millions of dollars, or I, I would just invent that. So we run our own products and our own affiliates, but, um, but yeah, it, I would advise anybody that's getting involved, growing and scaling their business that you have to either have a person in, in your organization who's looking over this stuff and breathing it, 
or the owner themselves, if it's a smaller company where they're involved in doing the same. Cool, man. So if someone wants to work with you, what's the best rate? What's the best way to connect? Uh, they can message me just directly, Phil, P-H-I-L at leadstacker, L-E-A-D-S-T-A-C-K-E-R.com, leadstacker.com. And um, on that site, yeah, there's there's just a contact form. You can reach out to us, talk to us, uh, get a quote. We always have value offers and value ads. We have uh, coaching and consulting courses. We have um, a retreat coming in Costa Rica, funnel building retreats. So we're doing a lot of really cool stuff as our, our business is only about a, a little over a year old and it's, it's really starting to scale. Yeah. So if you guys want to see how a funnel works, go over to Leadstacker and give them your information and you'll see in real time how a funnel works because Phil's going to be on top of you, you know? Yep, exactly. You're going to go through my funnel. Yep, that's right. All right, cool, man. We miss anything or we pretty much cover uh, everything at a high level. I think that's good, man. All right, good stuff. Hey, well, thanks for coming on. Everyone, thanks for listening. Until next time, go out and close some deals. Mm-hmm.